Hello and welcome to this new top three video. My name is Jos Appelbaum and in these videos we ask famous pen people their personal top three pens. In this week's episode we asked Stephen Brown his personal top three pens. Stephen is a well-known founder pen reviewer with almost 50k subscribers on YouTube. We are working for a long time now together with Stephen and he became a good friend over the years. It was in the spring of 2012, I think, that we sent our first bottle of Mont Blanc ink to Steven for review. Back in the days, he used to live in the Netherlands, but for the love of his life, he moved to Canada. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Steven, and I think I can speak for everyone when I'm saying this, to thank him for all the things that he does for the Fountain Pen community. So, thank you Steven, and let's have a look now at your personal top three pens. Hey there! It is SBRE Brown, uh, the fountain pen reviewer, uh, talking about my favorite pens for Appelbaum Pennen. So, uh, it, it's always difficult to, to, to choose your favorite pens, but as I was thinking about this when, when Joost asked me to, to do this video, I realized that I, I didn't really have to think that much about it. So I have my three probably all-time favorite fountain pens right here and I'm going to show them to you one by one. The first pen is actually it, it actually two pens but I think we can count it as one and um, I, I these pens have, have pretty much been known to me all my life I, I realized. They come in this little pouch which is a pen case made by Berba, which is a Dutch uh, brand of leather goods. And uh, in here are, are two pens. There is this fountain pen, and then there is this ballpoint pen, made by Parker. This is a Parker 75 set, and it belonged to my grandfather. And when he, uh, when, when he was uh, uh, pretty much on his, his, his deathbed, he, he promised me these pens. And so I've, I've had them since 2010, when, when he passed away. And I remember, that's what I meant by these pens have been in my life, basically my entire life, because I remember every time I was with my grandparents, this, this very pouch would be within my, my granddad's reach, pretty much wherever he was. And he, he was a very avid, uh, a crossword puzzle solver so the ballpoint was always used for that it was used for his cross points uh, sorry his crosswords and he pretty much didn't use any other pen I, I don't think I've ever seen him use another ballpoint pen but this for that purpose so that was that and uh, he he said that after his death uh, I, I, I should have it engraved so it is it's Dutch it says van opa, which means from grandpa. So that's that will always be there, right? That's 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 the the bull point. Then there is the fountain pen, uh, which he I I have pretty much only seen him use that for one thing, which was signing his name, usually on on checks or something. A very nice fountain pen. The the as I said, the Parker seventy five. Uh, here in a, in, a, in a gold finish. I, I have always really liked that that fluted design. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's a comfortable pen. Uh, it's, uh, he, he used it posted. So he always used it like this. The fun thing about this particular uh, um, pen was that you, you can actually rotate the nib. So you can, it has grooves in the section uh, and you can rotate the nib so you can use it for your specific writing angle depending on how you hold it but of course all of that says maybe what's really important about this is that it's my granddad's pen and so he's been with him so he's he's had that has had this this pen set in this case for many years and he he always uh, used it um, for for pretty much all of his writing purposes so i think the beauty of a fountain pen is that's a very personal product and because it is so personal it kind of absorbs someone's personality a little bit. So when I, I use this pen, this is not necessarily, a, a, this fountain pen is not a pen I would ink up every week or every month, but when I do do it, and I typically do that sort of in the month, 
uh, in October because that's that's when he passed away. And it's a bit like like communicating with with a family member who's no longer there anymore. So uh, that's that's always been been very important, um, uh, a very important pen to me. Plus, this was the pen that when I inherited it kind of made me go online, look up pens, fountain pens, to learn more about this pen. And I found out there was this whole community. And I'd been using fountain pens for a while, but I didn't know that whole community existed. And I, I found videos on pens, etc. And that was actually the start of my own career. It's not really a career, but career in, in, in the, 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 the pen biz as a pen reviewer. So, so it's been very instrumental this this set of pens in that, that in launching that that uh, sort of hobby career as a fountain pen reviewer the second pen i want to talk about is very related uh, to to these pens because uh, my granddad also left me a bit of money when he uh, when he passed away and i thought i want to put that towards something really nice that i can have forever that i can use and uh, that, that, that would just be sort of a keepsake. And I, I bought this. So this was the first pen I bought that has a gold nib. It is a Visconti Opera Elements in the fire finish. There was an earth, a wind, a fire, uh, earth, wind, fire, and a metal, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm confused now. Anyway, this is the fire finish. Very nice pen. I was able to get that. Uh, so this is from, I've had this from 2010. The first pen I ever bought that had a gold nib, that had a, a converter so I could use bottled ink. And I, I fell in love with this material. It's a, in, in my mind, it's a, it's a stellar celluloid. Uh, very nice pen. It's, it's not particularly large, but it, it, it has a nice size. It has a beautiful and quite responsive 14 karat gold nib and it's just filled with a with a converter so it's 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 nothing particularly fancy or anything but i really love it because it was the first pen that i bought again kind of to to, to commemorate my my granddad because he was a pen person he only had one fountain pen but he loved watches and he loved pens he was that type of person and whenever we would you know walk through town he would always stop at a watch store and, and look at the shop window and he had this fascination with with nice uh, luxury pens as well so I thought this would be a good way to to commemorate him and um, I think it's it's a very uh, a very nice model it's a nice size a lot of people can use it comfortably and beyond the 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 emotional attachment that I have to it again the first pen that I bought with a gold nib so it felt like a very luxurious writing experience and I've, I've always loved it for that. And this too is a pen that I may not ink up every month or, or every week or whatever, but every time I do, I kind of fall in love with it all over again because it is a very, very pleasant writer with a very smooth nib, very responsive, offers a tiny bit of line variation. It's really quite nice. So I, I, I really do like that. Uh, it's also, by the way, personalized here at the, at the top. It has my, um, my, my initials on it with the, the Visconti My Pen System, which I think is quite a, it's a nice touch as well. <coughs> Excuse me, need to take a sip of water. Almost dying here, but there we go. Okay, so we have this. So we have the Parker 75, we have the Visconti, so we have sort of the British pen, and we have the Italian pen. And the final one, that is a pen that's also very special to me. I, I saw that at a pen show. I loved it, but it was quite expensive, and I didn't want to buy it. And then my very sweet wife bought it for me. And this pen is the classic pens LB5. This pen is based on the Sailor King of Pen, except this is half a centimeter longer, and it is made out of diffusion bonded acrylic, which is supposed to be a sort of, sort of, sort of like a, a bulletproof acrylic that's, that's very uh, uh, stable over time. Now, I think that not only is this pen a beautiful shape, it is a perfect size, it also has a very special nib. Uh, which I'll, I'll come back to, but the first thing about this pen is the material is stunning. 
and when people see it, every time I, I give it to someone to, to try out, people say, wow, that is amazing. Now, if you look at this close up, you'll see there is a tremendous depth in the material, these, these sort of bands of very intense, a beautiful red. Uh, to me, it almost looks like sometimes, you know, you have these beautiful summer night skies where the whole sky turns sort of red. And you have these bands of clouds. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. And I, I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. So, a beautiful pen uh, made by Sailor for classic pens. And uh, I, again, I think it's a, it's a superb size. Large without being obscenely large and as I said what is also very special about this pen is the nib. This is one of the original Nagahara nibs made for Sailor which is two nibs welded on top of each other. So it's a very broad nib uh, that offers a, a relatively narrow downstroke but a very wide side stroke. And that makes it special too. So not only is it a beautiful pen, not only was it a, a beautiful gift, but it also writes in a way that is, in my mind, truly special because I don't have any other nibs that, that write like that, which, which make this pen very special. So here you have three pens that, to me, are special, personal reasons, because of the way they perform, but in my mind, what makes a fountain pen so special is not necessarily the way it writes. It's not that you ink it up and you have to clean it and it's sort of a, a meditative moment with the bottle of ink and all that, but it's the stories behind the pen. And those pens that over the years I, I've had, as a reviewer of pens, I've had the, the good fortune to be able to try out hundreds of pens. But the ones that I decided to keep are truly special. And I would rather collect the memories and the emotional stories that go with each pen than have hundreds of pens that have no meaning to me and that I purchased just because I needed more pens. I don't like to do that. I like to keep and cherish those things that are truly special to me. That's all there's to it. So, hope you enjoyed my story. I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.